okay, well, uh, the world's worst kept secret. Um, Bradley Dack returned to Gillingham. Uh, Dacky, welcome home. Um, it's all uh, signed and sealed, ready. How are you feeling? Yeah, I can't wait to get going, to be honest. Um, obviously, yeah, there's been a, a few rumours over the past few weeks. Um, lots of moving parts, but yeah, we, we got there in the end. And yeah, I'm buzzing to be back and I just want to help this club get promoted. Um, that's what I'm here for and that's what I want to do. Once you knew Gillingham were interested, was there really any other <laughs> option that appealed to you significantly more? Of course, it was. Uh, there's a lot of nostalgia around the football club, obviously growing up here and being here from a young age and then obviously moving on. Um, listen, I've had a couple of bad injuries throughout my career, um, which probably hampered it a little bit. So listen, when they, obviously when I knew there was interest, it was something I definitely wanted to listen to. Um, Obviously, there was a few other clubs in, in higher leagues that we spoke to, but yeah, I think we, we kind of got there in the end where we needed to be, and yeah, it's nice to be back. I'm sure every fan is going to ask you the same question. Is Daki ready? Is he fit? Is he match fit? <laughs> so your answer would be? I wish I was, um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, listen, I haven't, obviously I haven't trained for since the last training session of last season, which was the beginning of May, so I've done my work in the summer, my off-season plan, but yeah, not not ready to go into to full fixtures yet. Um, probably going to need two or three weeks of, of real training to, to build my fitness up to get to a level where I can compete you know, on a match day. Um, but listen, that's something to look forward to and yeah, I'm sure I'll be fit and firing soon. In terms of injuries, because you, you've had a couple of very serious injuries, are, are you hopeful the worst of that is, is behind you now? How do you feel when you said? Yeah, I feel really good. Listen, the, the last, obviously I had two knee injuries and the last one was, was in, 2021 so it's been I've had two full seasons two and a half seasons back um, last year didn't go as well as, as I wanted it to go uh, I picked up a little hamstring strain around Christmas and I was out for kind of 10 weeks which was difficult um, but yeah other than that touch wood I've, I've been pretty healthy um, been available for a lot of games uh, just wasn't being picked so yeah I'm, I feel like my body's in, in the right place I just need to get it match fit football fit and um, ready to attack the league I don't know if there's many peak lads here that were here when you were here. Um, obviously, Joanne Glasson's a coach in the academy, yeah. and of course, you've got Max Langer. Yeah. So, um, have you spoken to him at all? I spoke, I spoke to him a lot, yeah. Oh, I've been okay. speaking to him for the last probably six weeks. He's Agent Max. Agent Max, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I've kept in contact with Max for all these years. Um, speak to him quite often, so yeah, I think he's happy. Obviously, I know Glash, and I've known Johnny uh, since we were kids. Um, grew up playing against his Crystal Palace team, so yeah, they're the two I know, and obviously Max is the only one that was that was here from last time. So when you are uh, fighting fit, um, obviously the goal is to try and, I suppose, get on the score sheet as much as possible, play as much as possible, and help the team get to where they want to be. Absolutely, yeah. I've, listen, I'm coming here to try and make the team more positive, uh, try and affect football matches, um, and that for me is scoring and creating goals, but. It's not about me, it's about the team and, and wanting the team to get promoted and that was kind of one of the big reasons I, I come here because I know that this club shouldn't really be in this league um, and obviously speaking to the manager and the staff and the chairman it's something that they want to get out of very quickly and I've kind of bought into that and yeah that's that's the goal for this season. You won't have heard that roar from the rain event and of course the other stands for quite a while, how much are you looking forward to experiencing that? Yeah, I can't wait. Um, I'm sure it'll be a, a great day. Uh, the first game back, yes, it's something obviously I've experienced before, but I'm going to experience it again, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. The fans took to you when you were here before. Of course, you came through the, the academy program. You've moved on since then. Is it a bit, a bit sentimental, emotional coming back for a second time? 100 percent. Yeah, when I when I first come here for a meeting with the manager and, and the staff, it was a bit strange. Obviously, I haven't been here for seven or eight years. Um, this wasn't here, players down just different. Yeah, it's all different, a lot of things are different, a lot of things are the same. Um, but yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's nostalgic, it's nice, it's a nice feeling, it feels like home, it's, it's comfortable for me, so yeah, I just want to give my best um, and try and affect, affect football matches. So apart from Johnny and, and Max, you probably played against a few of the boys in the past, but um, anyone else that you kind of know particularly well? I think, I know Darren, the goalie coach, I've known him since we were young. Glenn Morris, um, of course, I think you might have played with Glenn. I played, oh sorry, I played yeah. with Kat, yeah, 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 I played with Kat my last year, um, Glenn's a good guy, and I know Hazy, obviously uh, he was at Sunderland last year, 
um, as a coach, so I know them. Uh, playing wise, I think Tim played against Tim a little bit. Mm. Um, the others, not so sure. But listen, I, I see the game against Carlisle, and I thought that was brilliant. Um, good result against a team that's tipped to be one of the top sides in the league this year. So it bodes well. Um, obviously, the boys have got to try and back it up with with two away games, two performances to to make that result a really good result. Um, but yeah, listen, from what I'm hearing, it's a young team, a forward-thinking team, and can't wait to get started. You were with Andy Hesterthal earlier, you know Hess very well. Um, I know his record has just been beaten as the oldest player to represent the club. That's now Glenn Morris. Um, he won't thank me for mentioning it, um, <laughs> but he's like a fine wine Glenn, isn't he? Yeah, he is, yeah. Listen, he's a great goalie. He was a great goalie when he was, he was number two, obviously, to, to Nels at the time. But yeah, he's in training and stuff, he makes unbelievable saves. and. He was a good guy as well. He's good to have around the changing room. Uh, I think, is he 40 now? He's 41 in December. 41 in December, Doesn't yeah. look it, does he? No, he doesn't. And it's obviously a testament to him how he looks after himself to still be playing at that age. Did Hess not mention it to you? Because I, th I think he's a little bit gutted. Hess, he didn't mention it to me, no. No. And he normally, he normally would, so, yeah. Still the oldest outfield player, though. OK, and what was Hess? He 38? I think, yeah, I think he was 39, 39. and a bit. Yeah. Um, it's a good effort as well. Good effort. He's yeah. paying for it now, no, Hesse. Yeah, yeah. I, I won't. Uh, yeah, I won't mention. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dak, thanks for your time, mate. I'm um, looking forward to seeing you play again. No worries, Welcome come home. Mate. Thank you, mate.